Good evening. Welcome back to our series of video understanding Sibet. And today we are starting uh, another principle, our third principle, and that is uh, relevant learning activities and resources. So here we are going to unpack uh, this principle and we'll be focusing on uh, various uh, learner, active learner strategies or activities and of course resources and uh, content delivery. So stay tuned. So to introduce uh, this principle, we need to understand uh, what learning is. And uh, learning is a process of uh, acquiring new uh, knowledge, behaviors, uh, skills, values, attitude, and uh, preferences. So it focuses on uh, acquiring new knowledge and, of course, other aspects of learning, behavior, and uh, attitude. Uh, it's a complex process that uh, occurs through a variety of uh, experiences. And these experiences could include uh, a formal instruction, uh, it could be informal observation or personal reflection. So, in brief, that's what learning is. Uh, and it's also good to understand what are these learning uh, activities. So learning activities are uh, anything that uh, you do to learn something new. So anything you do, any activity that you undertake to gain that new knowledge or new skills or behavior, those are called learning activity. And they can take different forms. It could be formal. In such cases of uh, taking a class or attending a workshop, or it could be informal, such as reading a book, or watching a documentary, or any other uh, learning activities, so that you're able to gain new knowledge or behavior or skills. And this learning activity can also be at individual level, or it could be group-based. So when you talk about learning activity, we need to focus on uh, preferences of our learners and which learning activity suits individuals or group of learners. So those what it constitute uh, learning activities. And when talking about relevance of these learning activities, the understanding is that the learning activities are those that are aligned with your learning goals and objectives. And of course, when you conduct your sessions, the objectives that you, over, you have always wanted to meet or you want to meet, and that constitutes a relevance of learning activity because you're doing it to achieving a certain objective. And of course, we support our learners uh, with the different learning activities materials and resources that reflect industry expectations and requirements. And you can see in each uh, and all the other uh, principles that you have discussed, you can see industry expectations and requirements. And therefore, when you talk about relevance uh, of this learning activity, you need to focus aligning the activities with your goals and objectives and of course reflecting uh, industry expectations bring me to a point what are these considerations that uh, you need to have or you need to consider when choosing effective learning activity so one is uh, your learning activity should be engaging and that means uh, it should be able to capture the learner's attention and interest. So any learning activity you choose, 
should be one that is uh, learners are able to engage with that content and that will be able to capture their attention and interest. Another aspect uh, that you need to consider is uh, your learning activity needs to be appropriate, especially for your learning styles, yeah, the learner learning styles and the level of knowledge. Of course, CBET focuses on uh, individual learning and uh, we have variabilities of learners in class. So you need to factor the level of knowledge. It could be beginners, it could be intermediate or advanced levels. So effective learning activity, the second consideration that it should be appropriate for that particular uh, learner. And another one is uh, your learning activity should be active. And that means you should be able to do something. A learner should be able to do something. And it could constitute uh, critical thinking or solving of problems or even creating something. So you need to engage your learners with your learning activities that are active. And the last one is uh, your learning activity should be challenging. And you may wonder why uh, our activity should be challenging. So this should push the learner to be able to grow and learn. So when you talk about providing a learning activity that's challenging, the learner find it uh, to brainstorm among themselves and find solution for that uh, challenge. And of course, there are many other considerations, but uh, it's always good to ensure that your effective learning activity should be engaging, should be appropriate for that level of uh, knowledge, should be active and uh, challenging. Let's talk about resources. And resources is a critical component uh, or crucial element when it comes to delivery of content. And we want to say that in our beginning, in our introduction to understanding CBET, that CBET approach is uh, resource intensive. And therefore, you need to identify your resources based on certain criteria. So when you're choosing resources, it's important to consider uh, learner learning styles and preferences. Like we earlier say that CBET focuses on individual learner and each learner has their own preferences. It could mean uh, they would prefer to learn by reading or watching videos or actually doing the actual work or hands-on activities. There some learners who could work best in a group or by themselves at individual level. And therefore, you need to identify uh, your resources appropriately for that session. And it's also good to note that resources are usually guided by learning outcomes. And previously, in our second principle, we talked about clear measurable outcomes. And we saw how constructive alignment learning outcomes can be in terms of affecting assessments and your training methods. So you now understand that uh, your training methods will require resources to meet a particular learning outcome. So resources are very key when uh, you want to deliver your content. And when I'm talking about content delivery, now the actual delivering of the, of the content in class, of course, it follows different steps and one of the things that as trainers we do is uh, we plan effectively so when you talk about planning you need to develop uh, training tools and those trainers tools include uh, training plans and currently that's how it's called or learning plan uh, formerly it was called schemes of work so that's a very important document that we need to develop. You also need to develop session plans, uh, formerly lesson plans. You also need to develop session notes and also 
properly identify your resources. So that constitutes learning. And of course, there are many others like understanding your, uh, your learners, which you're going to look at uh, as we move on. So when you've already planned, then you need, you need to engage learners through active learning strategies. And you're going to spend a couple of uh, time here, which learner activities uh, are engaging, appropriate, uh, challenging, and of course, active. So after you plan, you now deliver using different active learning activities. And after which, of course, you're going to give feedback through assessments, and you're going to look at that portion. So basically, this is a stepwise approach that you need to plan before you deliver your content. And when you do that, you also need to use uh, active learning strategies. So let's focus on planning. And uh, realize planning and preparation are crucial elements of uh, conducting an efficient training sessions. So it's very important that you plan well for your sessions. And it's always say that planning is at the heart of any effective and expert training. So an expert training or an effective training always plan ahead. Not only plan, but plan effectively. And you understand that when you plan effectively, it has a ripple effect in terms of uh, incredible effect on the students, uh, leading to more success and achievement. So it's very important that you really, really need to plan. And again, something to note that planning was due to almost 75% of our training session. So you can see almost uh, two thirds of our time we need to take uh, just to plan for a session. Developing uh, training uh, plans, session plans, and of course identifying resources. It's not an easy task. And that requires uh, most of our time. So I was doing my research, uh, came across uh, a statement that uh, is proper that I also share with you. And that is uh, academy, when we are talking about the importance of planning for trainers. So this statement reads, remember not all planned sessions are extraordinary and not all the unplanned programs are terrible, but a great plan can definitely make a great plan programs. So it's a complex statement, but if you synthesize it, it could mean that uh, it is a good reminder that planning is important, but um, it is not everything. So sometimes uh, unplanned things can be even be better than planned things. However, uh, a great plan can definitely help to make a plan program even better. So what does this mean is uh, the key is to be flexible and adopt your plans as needed. So if you are prepared for anything, then you can make the most of any situation. So what do you think about that? So the pattern shot is uh, we need to plan for our seabed sessions. And of course, when you're talking about uh, planning, of course, there are considerations that uh, we need to leap into. One is uh, you need to know your learners very well. As for those who are implementing seabed, the September class, you need to know your, your learners very well. And you can adopt this using uh, different tools that are available. So you can develop a, a short survey, a pre-survey that you can use, share with your learners so that you're able to uh, understand them. So you can uh, use different techniques of understanding your learners. 
when you do that you need to define your goals which is a very important component of content delivery so understand your goals choose your methods based on your learning outcomes and when you're talking about method we say it should be uh, effective uh, learning activities um, again you need to design your activities and you're going to see that using different tools and of course you need to prepare your materials when you're talking about preparation you also need to test them so in case for example you want to introduce ict in your sessions then you need to test the gadgets the projectors the computers before your sessions so you need to consider this before uh, you deliver your contents so in your planning a session there are certain things that uh, you require one is uh, your occupational standards uh, your curriculum you also need a training plan or learning plan which was formerly schemes of work so you need a template uh, you also need a session plan uh, formerly uh, was called lesson plan so this is what you need and you should be able to prepare all these tools so in our subsequent uh, sessions we'll be able to look how do we develop uh, some of these tools um, so in our next video we'll focus on a training plan and uh, we'll see how you're able to develop uh, this tool and how best you can able to utilize uh, this important tool so today uh, to summarize we have looked or started on the third principle that is uh, relevant uh, learning activities and resources so we have just looked at a brief introduction of what learning is and what constitute effective learning activities. We have also able to look at why resources are important. And next, in our next video, we'll uh, try now to start developing uh, training plans, session plans as we move on. Thank you. And uh, our challenge is still there. It's still uh, on our road to 100 subscribers and for those who have subscribed thank you for your support and i hope we are learning from uh, these educative videos and we hope to continue the same spirit thank you